Okay, everyone, uh, Linux episode 27. Uh, in case we don't seem as well-versed as we usually are, it's because we have changed the topics at the last minute here. Uh, right after I published last week's show, I got what can only be described as a fanboy I hate Linux troll letter, where the guy made some interesting points, and he had Hitler as a as his thumbnail, and he had other links, and other stuff. We're not covering that this week. We're gonna, and there's no show next week because Jordan is taking a much needed sabbatical in R and R and other stuff. <laughs> so, um, we're just basically this is one of the shows that's shutting down next week. Everything may be shut down next week. I don't know. Uh, but rather than address fanboyism uh, with this last show before a break, we're going to address the developing stuff going on with Oracle and, you know, the growing concern of what is Oracle going to torpedo next now that they've bought Sun. <laughs> um, you know, it's, we, we talked about this a little bit before. They've kind of, they haven't officially stopped development on OpenOffice, but they're not really actively doing anything either. We, we kind of all disagreed on that. I'm inclined to completely change my opinion that they have their hands full and they may actually be thinking to kill it given the way they're reacting with uh, Solaris and suing Google over an open implementation of Java and everything. So this is, uh, it's like, wh wh which one do you want to start with? Both of these are loaded stories. <laughs> um, uh, it doesn't really matter to me. I would probably say the open Solaris thing first because okay. the Google one might take longer. Okay, let's start with the open Solaris one then. Yeah. That's, uh, so, so, okay, they've, they've killed this. Are they actively discouraging pursuit of it like they are with other projects right now? Or is it... You know, I'm, I'm not even 100% sure that they've officially killed it. There was a linked memo that came out, and all the news, uh, news outlets have picked it up as if it is, you know, the uh, Oracle's honest truth that, that that's what's going to happen. It could have been a draft of a memo that is never going to go out, but uh, a lengthy email sent out to the Solaris team by Mike Shapiro, uh, this, that, and the other. What, what does it even say? It doesn't really have anything in it. <laughs> now, I'm looking at the register. Okay. Yeah. In short, the Oracle executive said the open source community-driven open Solaris project is dead. Get over it. So, I mean, if that's a, a, a true email, if it actually did come from the, uh, the higher-ups at Solaris, at Sun, at whoever they're, they're calling themselves today, uh, that's kind of sad for it. But uh, from what I've seen and what I've read before, it is entirely possible that the community might pick it up. Okay, yeah, because Open Solaris is actually truly open source. And Solaris used to be Sun. It's, we should point out where this comes from. It's basically what happened is Oracle spent a lot of money buying Sun. So now Oracle spent a lot of money buying a lot of things. Yeah, buying a lot of things. That's the thing. The latest of which is Sun. Uh, and Sun, some of the stuff that Sun created was open source, and some of it was open licensing. It was released under a general public license uh, in which a lot of things could be built on top of it and it could be used, but it wasn't purely free software. Um, it, 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 this gets back into the whole open source versus free software versus free software versus, you know, what is little can of worms. It's a complex issue to say the least. Um, it's the concern always, and this is where the free software people are always wearing their tinfoil hat and they're purists. They're like, if it isn't purely free software, we don't want to mess with it and we don't want to do anything with it. And that's because the fear always is, someday down the road, something on which something else is built on top of that isn't purely open but is free and open enough for use today will be sold from company Y to company X, which will then change what's allowed, what's not okay, how you can use this, whether or not it continues to develop and everything else. And everything that's been built on top of this has to either pick up development for itself or in some cases completely reinvent the wheel to replace it. 
Uh, I don't think Open Solaris is going to have to be completely replaced. I think worst case scenario, projects may just get delayed six to twelve months while the open source community picks up that development, because the licensing on that doesn't forbid that, as far as I know. Or is there anything in there that might get iffy? Uh, I'm actually just reading the the Wikipedia article, not the not the hundred percent know all source of everything, but. Yeah. Remember to have discontinued it, but the source code will continue to be accepted from the community, and source code from Oracle will continue to be released into open source, but only Oracle code releases will occur after binary releases. Okay. So... There was a post confirming the leak on the Open Solaris forums on the 13th. Okay, then that's probably pretty... Yeah, there's, I would bet Solaris is... The, the uh, best, best case it. scenario, it will still exist, but it's going to be changed to something else, I guess. Well, no, well, what's going to happen here, then, is uh, going forward as Oracle develops it, it's not going to be the open platform it was, which means for open source to continue to use it, it basically it's going to fork there'll be the open implementation of it which continues to develop forward and there'll be the official Oracle implementation of it which develops in a different way. Um, oh, and Solaris is going to go back to being Solaris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and open whatever Open Solaris becomes, I'm sure won't be able to use the name Open Solaris for long because Oracle will sue them and go, we own the name Solaris now. <laughs> I, I, um, you know, this is in coalition with a lot of other stuff Oracle's doing here. It's you really wonder if they get what they bought with a lot yeah. of their stuff because it's honestly, if what we're talking about just happens and Oracle continues to like, oh no, you have to come through us. It's, there is no more open development. It's ours. But the original open thing continued to be developed on by open source. But let's see, what is the open source community, and what is pretty much any industry that uses Open Solaris as a foundation for things. Are they going to suddenly switch and follow Oracle blindly, or are they going to follow the other fork? <laughs> uh, it, it's, I, I, I mean, it, it might wind up splintering the, the whole thing, but I'd see more following the Open Fork than following Oracle trying to box it. Uh, or do you think... Or do you think more people would, would follow if, when after the name change... Uh, more of the industry would have a harder time finding it. Uh, realistically, I think Oracle is just after whatever they can do to make their, their next dollar. They're trying to figure out how they can make money off of this purchase. So as far as the industry, the industry is going to go with what uh, will take the least amount of change, probably. So if, if Oracle is making a lot of changes and not allowing as much community involvement or any community involvement, uh, the people that are already using it will probably stick to whatever forks off from it. Just, just a, a speculation there. Well, yeah, no, that's probably. I would tend to agree with that. It, it's like it seems very short-sighted to take this approach, uh, Ansan, because while there may be some initial boost for Oracle in the long run, I think they've killed Open Solaris, or a, a, at least their fork of it, <laughs> whatever yeah. that winds up becoming. Well, and, and technically, Open Solaris is is a relatively young product. Well. And now we're assuring it isn't going to become a relatively middle-aged product. <laughs> I mean, Open Solaris isn't like something like... Um, I'm trying to remember the database program right now. Uh, it's, I can't remember. <laughs> the, the one that Oracle Sun bought, or...? Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, MySQL? Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's this isn't that. It's, by the way, that I, I, that's one of the things circling about on this is like, is what's going to happen to MySQL now? <laughs> right. What's going to What's going to happen to all these things that we were dependent on? Because MySQL is very uh, favorable. I remember talking about MySQL whenever they bought it, and uh, it seemed like they were just going to, you know, haha, we've got our competitor, let's just crush it. But they made it sound like we're actually going to keep developing it, and we're going to keep just charging for support for it now, and. That does seem like a viable model. Well, know? that that's a very viable model as long as they keep it open and they allow it to continue to be the foundation of which it is, and they just charge for support. It's, you know, unless you're really familiar with working with databases in general, you need a little tech support with MySQL. It's, you you do. That's even with the GUI, even with anything else, you need a little help. <laughs> uh, and unless you've got a, a 
a really good GUI because like PHP, my web admin, whatever. There, there are so many different ones. PHP, my admin, and, and webmin, and uh, PHP, my SQL. I don't know. Honestly, it's been so long since I've used them, uh, but yeah, I remember yeah. it being relatively easy to get get you, up and you, going. You know, I I have messed with these in uh, terminal in the GUIs that they've written for them and everything else. And at the end of the day, what I keep going back to is set up the initial uh, variables are, are, are things for the database. And then I refuse to mess with it in anything in there. I open open Office or Excel and I mess with it in text files and just load them in. And so I refuse to mess with it over there because that's very, it's one of those things that UI has never been able to just quite get right. For some reason, I don't know. It's, it's so much easier to just come do it in an outside program and then load the sheet up. Um, uh, it's like, uh, and that—that's an interesting what if. If they did, as I hope they do what you're saying. If they did kill that, though, what would happen to databases throughout the web, considering the number of things that use MySQL? That's that would kind there of throw the whole. There would either be a fork of it that would come out, which would be almost certainly. Or uh, people would be a mass migration to PostgreSQL. Yeah, but which never really caught on because there's no real need right now. But there would instantly become one. It's like in the meantime, the internet would kind of go a little bit in array because, uh, I mean, open source is not the only thing that uses MySQL. <laughs> it's... Right. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of any e-commerce or merchant or anything that needs a database that doesn't use MySQL. Um, I mean, it's kind I'm sure there are a lot of them that use uh, the Microsoft stuff, and some of them probably use Oracle, but I don't, I don't know that many that would actually use Oracle's uh, database. It's not very good. It, it doesn't... It, just, it takes a lot more to administer it. It takes more to administer it, and it doesn't offer any advanced or any additional functionality that MySQL doesn't for the extra work you have to put into it. There, uh, I don't particularly like Microsoft's, but if you're on a Windows server and you're using all Windows software and all Microsoft software, there are some benefits to using that one because Microsoft went out of their way to make it harder to do other things. <laughs> and if you're using products like SharePoint, it's practically impossible to use anything but Microsoft and yeah. only the newer versions. Well, no, that, that was one of the things I'm talking about. It's just like, it's like, you know, it's one of the things that bugs me in the server environment and any of that about Microsoft in general. It's like, you know, I would probably use you if you didn't make mountains out of these molehills in, in unique circumstances, if you would work with other things. <laughs> But you make my life. Well, you, you can use our product for free as long as you buy our expensive paid database server, or you can use our paid product with our paid database server. Or <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. oh, and you have to pay uh, this much for your server license as well. And oh, you're going to have that on the internet. Add forty thousand dollars to that. Yeah, I know. Well, and at the end of the day, some of this stuff companies would buy, but most companies, when they start adding up, okay, to use this one little thing. Wait a minute, how do I get to a hundred thousand dollars? Never mind. I'll stay over here. <laughs> I, 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 I can't even afford to look uh, at that. It's too is, much for my budget. Sad thing is a lot of companies don't even think about it. It's oh, it's a hundred hundred thousand dollars. Okay, we'll just put that in the budget. You're talking about large companies. For the most part, most of my clients and most of the places I deal with are small businesses, and small businesses uh, take one look at that and don't even think about it. Uh, the place I work for only has a hundred employees, and they were considering SharePoint. And we do have all the the SQL stuff and all the yeah. I, I work in a Windows environment, and I'm stuck there, and I'm not terribly pleased with that. But uh, uh, but they, I, they are more than happy to shell out money for Microsoft because that's what's uh, what's required. 